What's happening, hardscapers, and welcome to the complete guide to building retaining walls. There are a lot of steps to the process of building a retaining wall that will last, and most failures that you see would have skipped one or more of these steps involved in its construction. This can lead to serious consequences as walls can hold up important live loads like people or cars moving on the surface it is retaining, or dead loads like a building. When in doubt, refer to the manufacturer's engineered drawings and specifications for the wall construction. In our area, and as a rule of thumb, walls that are built taller than approximately 3 feet require engineered stamped drawings and permits before building, make sure you do your research before you begin. This is a cross section of this particular retaining wall build that we are constructing in this video. There's a lot going on here so I'm going to break this down as fast as possible from start to finish and then we are going to visit the job site and move through each of these steps in greater detail. To begin, we excavate a trench for the wall, compact the subsoil and line the trench with a non-woven geotextile. We then compact a 6 to 8 inch base and level the first course of our wall units. The wall should have have a minimum of 6 inches embedded below the final grade, 6 inches of base material in front of the wall, and 12 inches behind the wall. A perforated pipe is installed behind the wall, elevated above the dense graded base, and sloped towards where you want the water to flow. 3 quarter inch angular crushed clean stone is installed behind the wall as you build up the wall keeping one full block below where you have installed the last row. As you build this backfill area up, it should be compacted. Any rows requiring uniaxial geogrid can be installed as you build up the wall. The non-woven geotextile is then returned towards the wall where topsoil will be added on top along with a cap that will be adhered to the top of the wall. Let's get into each of these steps in greater detail. We start with the excavation. The width is a minimum of 6 inches before the block plus the depth of the wall block plus an additional minimum of 12 inches past the wall block. You also notice that beyond the 12 inch mark the trench tapers up further past this mark. This will vary from wall to wall depending on the height so it is best to refer to the engineered drawings for your wall. Most many manufacturers have this available for each of their wall blocks. Our trench is dug. Typically for a retaining wall, we've got six inches before the block, then our depth of our block, and 12 inches behind the block, all in base. In this case, we've got the driveway acting as our six inch in front of the block so our block is going to be flush with this driveway depth of our block is 10 inches and we've got more than 12 inches in behind our block we've got six inches embedded for our wall so our wall block is actually going to be six inches buried and then a six to eight inch base so in total here we've got 12 to 14 inches dug out here so you can actually see where the organic stop and the subsoil starts here after our excavation our subsoil gets compacted and amended if needed this is followed by being aligned with a non-woven and geotextile fabric for separation and filtration. The fabric wraps around the entire trench and on top of the eventual backfill. There is an argument that the right subsoil, the fabric is not necessary along the vertical portion of the trench, as the fabric may become clogged with the fines, preventing the proper filtration and adding to the surcharge that is being applied to the wall. For this example, we are installing it as shown with the final piece being installed on top of the backfilled material. The base material is then installed in lifts based on how many inches your compactor can compact at a time. We use a granular A or a 3 quarter inch crushed angular stone down to fines for our retaining wall bases but you can opt for a 3 quarter inch angular crushed clear stone or ASTM number 57. Separates our base material from our subsoil so they don't mix, they don't contaminate, there's no movement between the two. It also adds a little bit of strength and filtration for our water to go through our subsoil. If it fills up we're going to have a drain in behind our wall taking it to the sidewalk. The base course of the wall is then installed ensuring each piece is level and in line with one another. A string line can help guide this process. We use a rubber mallet and a torpedo level for this step and take our time to get this base course perfect. Failure to do so will become increasingly evident the more the wall is built up. You will also notice that we are stepping this wall up from time to time. This is because without doing so while following the slope of our final grade would cause the depth of our base to fall out of our specified 6 to 8 inches. By stepping up our excavated area we are then able to step up our stones while keeping a 6 to 8 inch base below each stone that is laid. The number of step ups need to be planned ahead of time during the excavation phase by measuring the slope of the area. If possible it is easier to work from the bottom of an area and step up rather than stepping down. In order to speed up this process 
process of leveling, the base can be screeded using a 1 quarter inch angular crush clean clear chip or HPB. We can then level our top screed, which is one inch of this quarter inch crushed stone or HPB. And we just screed that out level. We then take out these pipes, make sure that we fill in the void. This allows us to not have to level each block. Basically from now on, we're just placing a block and going throughout this whole entire length and just checking as we go with each block to make sure it's level. The wall can begin to be built up once the first course is completed, checking to make sure the wall is being built level. Not all wall blocks are manufactured equal depending on the tolerances of manufacturers. Wall blocks must be staggered so that the lines from row to row do not line up with one another. There should be an offset at at least one third of a block. This adds to the strength and stability of the retaining wall. Some wall units have cores in which you fill in with three quarter inch angular crushed clean stone as you build the wall up. Some wall units have their own locking system built into the unit in the form of a rib, but others you'll be using a plastic clip or rod of some sort to form that lock from one row to the next. Corners of your wall should be planned for by alternating the piece that will be met, stitching the two walls together and providing strength to the corner. Rock face walls may require you to chisel corner units to create the rock face. This is done by using a chisel and a hammer and progressively increasing the strength to which you hammer the chisel into the stone while moving your way around the stone until it breaks off. There are also guillotines that can help you with this. Most walls have specified corner units to use, and if a wall is not a rock faced wall, then you need to plan for the corners appropriately to ensure they can be stitched together at the corner. A perforated drainage pipe is installed in behind the wall with approximately 4 inches of separation from the compacted dense base material. This allows for the drainage of any water that enters into the system. The drain also needs to be daylighted or exited out through the face of the wall at a maximum of every 50 feet. If you're using a dense graded base and filling it behind the wall with a clean stone, you'll want to separate these two layers with a non-woven geotextile. The backfilling of the wall is completed in stages as the wall is built. We backfill using a 3 quarter inch angular crush clear stone that has no fines in it and backfill to the level below the row of the wall we have just completed and compact it in lifts depending on how much our compactor is rated for. If it is required in engineered drawings, a uniaxial geogrid is installed. It helps to stabilize the aggregate behind the wall, preventing movement and pressure added to the wall. This is rolled out perpendicular to the wall and cut, not rolled out parallel to the wall. This is because a uniaxial geogrid has strength only in one direction and that direction needs to be extended into the wall and not along the wall. The geogrid never overlaps on a retaining wall installation. This geogrid is sandwiched in between the wall units and extends into the backfill to the length that is specified in the engineered drawings. This may extend into the structural subsoil beyond the clear stone. To do this, the non-woven geotextile will wrap towards the retaining wall where the uniaxial geogrid will begin and then again continue once the geogrid has been installed. This allows the geogrid to be installed past the clear stone area and into the structural subsoil. Some walls may include a setback, which in combination with geogrid allows for walls to be built taller to help withstand the force of the surcharge beyond the wall. This angle that the wall is set back at is referred to as the batter. In the case of this retaining wall, we are building it as shown here. On top of the non-woven geotextile, we add topsoil with a swale to control the flow of water away from the wall. A cap is then added and adhered to the wall to finish it. Natural stone caps may also require chiseling on their ends to create that rock faced finish where they have been sawn cut. We glue our caps to walls using a polyurethane adhesive that expands into the pores of the material creating a firm yet flexible seal. We use strips of glue that are perpendicular to the wall not parallel. This allows any water that makes its way under the cap to escape. When built correctly, walls are designed to create a functional space out of a sloping yard allowing homeowners to make the most of the space that they have. They can create features and raise patios for spaces and provide a lot of value to the property. Like this video if you're going to be building your own retaining wall, subscribe to our channel for more information on hardscaping and leave a comment with any questions that you may have.